Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's discuss the two best uses of castor oil, which is a anti-inflammatory antioxidant and antimicrobial fatty acid. And anytime we can use something natural to improve our health, that's a huge win. But also in my work as a researcher and an adjunct professor, I think it's important to cross-reference anecdotal claims about a thing, in this case, castor oil, with what's been published in the scientific research to give us the most precise perspective on how to use a given tool. So let's discuss castor oil through that frame. Firstly, what is castor oil? Well, it's a vegetable oil made from the castor bean plant. And it's been used for thousands of years, going all the way back to ancient Egypt and ancient Greece. The monounsaturated fatty acid that seems to offer most of the medicinal benefit in castor oil is known as ricinoic acid. And the mechanisms here, in part, are anti inflammatory, antioxidant antimicrobial, so it can fight things like bacteria and fungus, and also laxation or helping to aid movement of the bowels. So then this brings us to what I feel is the first of two uses for castor oil, the best uses. And this was surprising to me, but coming across a 2009 randomized control trial demonstrating benefit for joint pain. 100 subjects who had knee pain specifically as osteoarthritis were given castor oil as capsules compared to a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And they found both groups had improvements in their pain. There was slightly more pain reduction in the NSAID medication group. However, that group also had much higher rates of side effects, whereas there were no side effects reported in the castor oil group. Now, again, they took this castor oil as a capsule two to three capsules per day. And some people have remarked, anecdotally at least, that rubbing oil on a painful joint may also help. So you can use castor oil for joint pain in this application. Probably the best to use it as capsules given that's what this study did. But again, some people are noticing or reporting benefit, at least anecdotally, with rubbing castor oil on a painful joint. By the way, this has been helpful. Please comment and subscribe. So the next potential use of castor oil is for constipation. And it is FDA approved as a stimulant laxative and in some areas of the world is used as an effective bowel prep pre-colonoscopy. And this is because castor oil activates smooth muscle receptors in the gut and stimulates the bowels to contract. Now, that being said, I wouldn't recommend castor oil as a go-to for constipation. I would think of it more as a, I'm backed up, I need some sort of on occasion aid to kind of clean me out. But given that other therapeutics have more of a corrective effect with other side benefits, I think you're best using probiotics first, psyllium or some other sort of fiber first, perhaps modified citrus pectin, magnesium citrate, or senna. You could use castor oil for constipation, but again, I think on an as needed basis, just given that it's more of a purging oil than it is something that's truly corrective for constipation. We discussed a moment ago the antimicrobial action that castor oil has. And so this begs a few questions about microbes and in this case, candida. It has been demonstrated that castor oil is anti-candida, at least in vitro. There's no research on toenail fungus or on yeast infections. However, people anecdotally do report benefit from using castor oil in these applications. Now, as it pertains to nail fungus, whether it's toe or hands, I think it's worth a trial putting castor oil on a nail and seeing if you notice a benefit after a period of time. As it pertains to yeast, let's say a use case of vaginal yeast. Given that we've covered on the, pa on, on the show in the past that garlic capsules were as effective for vaginal yeast as the drug fluconazole, I think there are probably better options to use first for candida than castor oil. So again, I think you could try it in the application as an antimicrobial, but there are other agents that are probably going to be more effective. So then the second use case that I think is the best for castor oil would be for skin and for eye health. Most namely, a 2024 clinical trial for people who had dark circles under their eyes found that castor oil cream was effective. After two months of castor oil cream use, they documented improved dark circles below the eyes, reduced wrinkles, and reduced skin laxicity, or it made it more tight. 
This was a cream product applied twice per day. It's important to mention that because with an oil, it's gonna have the tendency to run. So just be careful with applying castor oil on or around the eyelid or, or eye because it can run. And this is where we'll link to a cream product that won't be quite as prone to sort of leaching and running. The second use within sort of skin and eye is dry eyes. Two studies have found that castor oil drops improved dry eye symptoms with a specifically formulated eye drop product. Very important here, do not apply undiluted castor oil directly in the eye. In the research that has applied this, it's been a diluted solution. For eyelid inflammation, what's also known as blepharitis, castor oil has been demonstrated to be effective. Also, a 2021 randomized control trial found that a roll-on castor oil applied to the eyelid was effective. And the design of the study here was interesting in the sense that they treated one eye with the oil and they didn't treat the other eye. So they could compare uh, the eyes to one another. And they documented a reduction in eyelid redness, dryness, and improved thickness, the eyelid naturally thins as you age and it can make a less flattering appearance. So the oil, the castor oil helped with improvement of the thickness. And additionally, it led to eyelash growth and less crusting of the eyelid. Again, just wanna echo, this was a roll on castor oil product. So it was a little bit different of a form, not a pure oil that would have the tendency to run. So just be careful with that. As it pertains to wrinkle reduction, we discussed the studies a moment ago that found under eye skin wrinkle reduction. There are no studies looking at castor oil use more broadly on the entire face or on the body to reduce wrinkles, but I think it's worth a trial given the fact that the under eye wrinkles were reduced with castor oil. Another potential use of castor oil is hair health. Because castor oil can moisturize, it may function as an antifungal, which can lead to uh, dryness of the scalp and dandruff, and it's also an antioxidant. That all being said, there are no clinical studies in humans using castor oil for hair health. However, if you're a rabbit, I have some good news. A 2023 re review paper did find improved softness, growth, and regeneration of hair in rabbits. My view is for hair, you could try castor oil, but there are other agents that have decent research behind them that would probably be good to experiment with first. Most namely, minoxidil, lasers, and dermarolling all have clinical trial evidence showing benefit for improving hair health. You may also want to consider biotin or collagen. Again, you could try castor oil. There's just not any good research here to guide how we use it. And regarding use of castor oil, there are a few precautions. Firstly, if you are pregnant, do not use castor oil. It's quite effective in inducing labor. In fact, it's quite widely used by midwives in this setting. Castor oil can also cause diarrhea, especially if you're taking it orally and the dose is too high. It may also cause abdominal cramping and bloating, vomiting, or dizziness. So just be on the lookout for these symptoms if you take too much, or maybe it just does not agree with you. And in close, for joint pain, I think it's worth a trial. For constipation, only on an as-needed basis. For candida, perhaps, although I think there are other options. For toenail fungus, I think it's worth a trial. For other types of candida, let's say you're having a yeast infection vaginally or you suspect some sort of intestinal candida, I think other options like garlic are probably better to start with. For skin and eye health, this is where I think it's worth a trial yet again for dark circles, for eyelid inflammation, and for wrinkles. And for hair, you could try it, but there's not really compelling research that informs if it's effective in that application. So hopefully this helps you with castor oil if you've tried it, let us know in the comments, or if you do try it, let us know how it goes.